Okay, ladies and gents, what up? Are we live? Now, today I'm bringing you a build constructed by Moon T. This is a Revolver Veteran build that I've been using on past few streams, and it's actually worked out fairly well. We have cleared Auric Damnation runs with um, surprisingly less failure than I thought. Uh, most of the failures were just honestly unfortunate circumstances or when I went down because I was literally anchoring the team with the revolver. So uh, in actuality, it, it provides a lot more power, support, and strength than I thought. And uh, I do have to admit, I was surprised by it. That being said, the revolver build does have a couple of weaknesses. One being, well, actually just has one, one big glaring weakness. And that one big weakness is just the ammo efficiency. Honestly, that's the only weakness it has. Um, other than that, it's pretty solid on all fronts. Uh, just a quick demonstration. Assuming you've got no enemies within 8 meters of you, and, you know, if you get if you manage to score a nice little crit, you can instantly take out a Dreg Gunner with a headshot. Alright, with, with a nice Surgical Blessing, you can pretty much uh, get crits reliably, and it takes out most targets very easily, in fact, as you can see. So... I would not hesitate, especially if you hit a weak spot from using the revolver. It's quite good. It lacks the armor penetration power that the plasma gun has, alright? And of course, it doesn't really do all that well against Carapace armor, unless you score a crit, in that case, which ignores armor anyway. But if you were to not score a crit, it won't do that much against Carapace, alright? But overall, it is a very, very solid weapon, and like I said, if you can aim a little bit with the Surgical Blessing, you can do fairly well with it. So how do you construct this amazing build, and how does it all work? Let's get into the details right now. And also, as we always do, camera vanish. Okay, <laughs> let's get into the details. First of all, your melee weapon. We always start with the melee weapon, and I have to tell you straight up that in this build, your melee weapon does not matter. You can actually choose from a variety of melee weapons. I tested it with the power sword, I tested it with the chain sword, I tested it with everything, and it will work with anything so long as you fulfill one condition. The condition is that you must be able to deal with hordes. Whatever melee weapon you use, you must be able to deal with hordes. The one that I'm using, obviously, is the chain sword, which you guys know that I kind of have a horn for. I've been using the chain sword several times in several matches and several streams. This has become my favorite weapon. Okay, Action Johnny was right. This is a fantastic weapon to use. Um, getting into the perks and stats, for my Chainsword in particular, I happen to get a 8% melee damage against Groners and Poxwalkers as a baseline. Um, and I rolled and put 25% flak armored enemies on it. Overall, I found that this is the best combination for myself, for my intended purposes. But if you find that you're having trouble killing, say, for example, mutants, change the flak armor to Maniac. Because the intention of the Chainsword is to be able to one-shot muties, which you guys should know by now. The blessings on this, in general, are suited for Horde Clear as well. I went with Savage Sweep and Rampage, both of which are extremely useful and extremely potent in the field. Um, other than that... What I did was I included a... Okay, no, that's it, that's it. Yep, so I rolled I rolled for Savage Sweep on this, sorry, because in the inspect screen, it doesn't... Oh, no, sorry, I rolled Rampage on this. I got Savage Sweep baseline, but I rolled Rampage on this, and that's, that's how it ended up. All right, in terms of stats, I went with damage, obviously, because damage should be as high as possible. Uh, a lot of people... And I want to clear up this misunderstanding. A lot of people tend to go for breakpoints. That's great, but as soon as a patch comes or as soon as your weapon changes slightly, you're going to feel weaker, you're going to feel problems. I just go anything that has damage. My rule of thumb is I try to get it as highly rolled as possible, irrespective of breakpoints, you know, because realistically the stat system is RNG. So it's better, future, it's better to future-proof your weapon, all right? Penetration, same thing. Why? Because it affects... The damage dealt to flak armor targets, okay, and carapace armor targets uh, on your heavy attack, all right? So you want your penetration to be as high as possible as well. This helps you in the field when you really want to cleave through armor targets, which will be fairly often because they will come up against you. 
I like to try and get mobility uh, as high as possible. Um, but anything above 70 is good. It doesn't have to be 80. Why? Higher mobility means higher sprint speed, obviously. Um, a better dodge limit, but you don't need 80 mobility for 5 dodges, FYI. Um, so anything above 70 is usually good. The only reason I even say 70 is because of the modifier called dodge distance. Uh, trying to get, just having that little bit of extra dodge distance helps you move a little bit faster in the field, which is exceptionally useful. Finesse, I always try and score as highly as possible. Why? Because this affects your critical and weak spot multiplier, which it is very easy, to, and it's very easy to hit weak spot with sweeping attacks because they have made sweeping attacks prioritize weak spots, yeah? And of course, it improves your attack speed overall, which you want to have, all right? I would try and get finesse and damage as close to 80, penetration as close to 80, but the problem is, for the chain sword, all the stats are important. You don't have a dumb stat on this. Why? Shredder affects your um, revved up attack. And if you do not have a shredder stat that is high enough, you cannot kill a mutie in one shot. With a shredder stat of 71, okay, it is possible, theoretically, now that beauty was weakened, but even if you perform a fully heavy attack, it'll be left on a dot. This is the one time where, unfortunately, you know, a breakpoint does matter. You do have to hit about, I think it's 73, 74 Shredder in order to one-shot a Mutie. And this is going to be even worse when they actually buff up the Muties um, in, the, in the patch to come. Because the Muties are going to have more health. So, because of that, it is exceptionally wise to have a good good shredder count so with your chain sword you're kind of up the creek without a paddle if you really if you don't mind if you've got a high enough penetration you can take away flak arm and enemies now it's testing with this but i'm most likely going to change this to maniac just to deal with the muties and make sure that they get a one shot all right one shot in muties is very important in auric damnation okay now we've we're done with the melee weapon so let's move on to the range weapon now the range weapon what you're going to want is your zorona mark 2a quick draw stub revolver there's only one all right, and this is the weapon that defines this whole build. What is so good about this? Okay, first and foremost, the weapon has very high damage and is very precise. It can really kill most targets outright. So don't be afraid to shoot things with this in the head, especially. Okay, if we view the attack breakdowns, okay, um, Carapace Armor suffers quite a negative modifier, okay, but... If you manage to crit, this is not going to matter. So against some maulers, sometimes I will still shoot their head instead of their body. This is because although the flak armor modifier is good, you really want the weak spot. You really want the weak spot modifier here, which ups the damage by quite an amount. All right. And if you get a critical weak spot hit, it's even better than that. All right. So this is why what I love about the revolver in general. Now, in terms of your uh, perks, what you will want is 25% armored enemies, unarmored enemies, sorry, and 10% range weak spot damage. This is what will allow you to one-shot the gunners, all right, very easily, especially if you hit the head, and it will also help you out against several other targets. That being said, the reason why I didn't go with flak armored is because flak, the scab gunners, although um, they do have flak armor on their head, they can be one shot without the extra damage modifier. So I went with unarmored to make sure that the other types of gunners die easily. Okay. Uh, in terms of blessings, I you want surgical on it. Surgical will allow you to increase your critical chance by ten percent for every zero point three seconds while aiming. Let me see. Let me see how fast it stacks up. Yeah. One thousand. Two thousand. Three thousand. You see, by the time you get to 3 seconds, you've already gotten 70% crit rate. See how that works? So, it stacks up really, really quickly. And in fact, sorry, that was less than 3 seconds, but, you know, because I count a bit fast. I don't have that super cool internal clock. But it's very good. Even if you aim for just a little while, the extra crit chance is beautiful. Okay? So, this is not a weapon where you want to spam. You want to get that crit chance on it, and then bang, 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 destroy your opponents. Yeah? Hand cannon will give you 80% rending on a critical hit. Rending reduces the enemy armor. It's a beautiful ability on this, okay? If you have to take a second shot, that second shot is going to be with basically no armor on the enemy. That's beautiful. So this is what I've got for perks and blessings. Now, stats-wise, 
this is one of those few weapons where you don't really have a dump stat, okay? But what you want to try and do is roll your damage, penetration, okay, and critical bonus as high as possible. Get these three as close to 80 as you can. Then get your reload speed as close to 80 as you can because I'm going to tell you right now, this gun reloads very slowly, okay? And it reloads one bullet at a time. So reloading this is something that a lot of people have a problem with because unlike, say, Cassidy and Overwatch, you don't just put five bullets in it straight away. No, you reload them one at a time. Mobility is the only thing that I would say loosely serves as your dumb stat, but I'm gonna have to be very be, I'm gonna have to be very frank with you. Even if you are using mobility as your dumb stat, you will want at least 65 on it. Why? Because mobility with this affects your dodge distance, and with this you are going to have to dodge in and out of cover. And your dodge limit is only four. Yeah, one less than your melee weapon. So you're going to want to be careful with this, all right? In the field, you would have sometimes noticed me doing some things like this. Like I'd be aiming down sights, I'll suddenly dodge, dodge back, aim, and then fire. Kind of like that. Yeah, this is a movement that is going to be very common in the field. So you're going to want to make sure that you really do have, okay, your revolver set up with a decent mobility stat. Now, the last thing that I'm going to tell you is that there is apparently a bit of a difference between the skins and the default. If you look at the default skin on this, right? The stub revolver has like a triangular uh, sight, all right? It's a little bit triangular, which I find a little bit difficult for hitting heads with. I don't know why, it might be a personal thing. But in case that bothers you as well, you can buy the, the Fireways Camel skin for free, okay? Just go to, go to that free skin shop and you can pick this up. And once you have the this particular skin on, all right, instead of a triangle, it's more of a it's more of a line, which I find a lot easier to hit heads with. I, I know it's just me being weird, but because of that, it's much easier for me to hit my headshots. So yeah, I chose to put the skin in because the aiming sight is iron sight anyway, it's different depending on uh, which skin you're using. Okay. So that is something I thought was worth mentioning as well. In terms of curios, I keep it simple. Max health, toughness, and toughness, okay? Your perks are standard, damage resistance gunners, toughness regeneration speed, and combat ability regeneration. I've got that across the board on all of these, okay? I use them exclusively because they are so good. It keeps me using my combat ability as often as possible. Considering the fact that the combat ability you're going to use with this is the voice of command, that shaves off a good five seconds off your time, okay? It is very important to shave that time off because it means more uptime, more ability, yell at your teammates, regenerating the toughness. Imagine when they reduce this to 30 seconds, which is coming in the next patch. That is three seconds off. You're going to be able to shout at your teammates every 27 seconds, giving them extra bonus toughness that lasts 15 seconds in the next patch. It's going to be 100 extra toughness. It's going to be insane, the amount of support you can put out with this. All right? Okay, now that we've gone through curios and everything, let's get into the talent tree proper. I'm going to walk you through this. Okay, I'm going to go as detailed as I can, explain everything to you guys. Now, I'm also going to explain where you can have variations and choices based on your needs. And off we go. All right? This is the talent tree designed by Moonty. I've made a small modification to it, and I'll let you know where it is. It's right at the top. And with this, you are going to be able to clear Auric Damnation pretty damn easily. All right, let's go into it. For the first part of the talent tree, what you're going to want is Long Shot and Volley Adept. Long Shot is always active and deals more damage the further the enemy is away. So it is very useful to this build since you can use it to snipe distance targets. Snipe distant targets, okay? Volley Adept is what I modified. Previously, I had the point here. Uh, Moonty had the point in Demolition Team. I found Demolition Team to not be as worthwhile because I regenerate grenades anyway through Demolition Stockpile, and I don't have the extra grenades. So because that, I went with Volley Adept instead. Because you will kill Elites and Specialists fairly easy with this. After that, just use the 30% extra reload speed to get a quick reload in. I found that that was the best way to reload this thing. Um, because its reload is slow and painful otherwise. 
a uh, close order drill and charismatic here will help you ensure that not only do you have more toughness damage reduction when allies are, co are in coherency but you also have a lovely large aura radius which benefits your survivalist down here okay as always we choose crack grenades why dealing with armored targets is beautiful when you can just blow them up without a concern this is your saving grace health boost and then grenade tinkerer to increase the overall damage to enemies all right i find this mostly useful against monstrosities and after the changes to um crusher and elite health this is probably going to be a necessity i will definitely test it but yeah you want to be able to one shot those crushes and bulwarks range damage boost is taken here and then catch a breath why not get back in the fight um it's it's really your choice honestly at this point it's your choice if you want to cha take get back in the fight in place of catch a breath you are absolutely welcome to because this build has confirmed kill so you're going to replenish toughness on every elite or specialist that you kill but sometimes but i find that for this particular build and for several of the other builds that i've done catch a breath is a bit more useful because there will be a lot of situations where enemies will not be within eight meters yes it will not help you when you're swarmed but when you're swarmed you're usually swinging in melee anyway so catch a breath for that reason is beneficial to me but don't hesitate to change it over to get back in a fight if you want to okay survivalist will be your aura of choice because you this gun is ammo hungry um especially because it's got such a low amount of reserves in general so survivalist is your saving grace and this is what will help you get more ammo drops hopefully because you'll be able to supply ammo to your team so hopefully they feed you the ammo instead fingers crossed yeah reload boost is done so that you can get kill zone again this is so that you can one shot enemies at a distance and you will want to have this because a lot of the time the enemies will be out of your team reach okay shoot them snipe them really quickly and this is where kill zone shines all right then you've got your toughness damage reduction demolition stockpile grab your voice of command and duty and honor which will currently allow you to provide you and your allies in coherency with 50 extra toughness for 10 seconds this is exceptionally useful again it's a it's a powerful thing okay this extra toughness can save you from pox bursters snipers they'll end up doing a lot less health damage to you which is why i like it so much it's just so good and later on thanks to the rest of the skill tree you're going to be able to shout your teammates into having more damage for about five seconds whenever you use voice of command so occasionally i will actually use it in serious situations to up the team damage and turn the situation around anyway um going down this side of the tree okay you want to go down your middle tree and what i've done here is i've taken range damage boost and another range damage boost here this extra bit of range damage is what helps you one shot and hit certain breakpoints all right but to do that you have to give up the damage against ogrins and monstrosities which is unfortunate but also something that i recognize that with this build is is fine enough you don't really need the 25 percent extra damage against ogrins and monstrosities because in general you either crack grenade them most of the time or rip them apart with your chain sword like if you really do have to shoot something it's okay it's like once in a while, it's going to cost you three bullets. And this is on Auric Damnation. I have not felt the need for bring it down at all. Okay, Superiority Complex, however, is a necessity. This improves your damage against elites and will help you hit certain breakpoints. Health boost, I mean, coupled with this other range damage boost, yeah. Health boost is, you know, needed to progress. Toughness boost is needed to progress. Then Confirm Kill is a must-have. It is core to this build and will replenish 25 toughness on elite or specialist enemy kill and a further 25% toughness over 10 seconds. As you know, this can stack any number of times. And the best part about this is that you will constantly have this up because this whole build is about one-shotting those annoying elites, annoying specialists that come in, shoot them, you gain your toughness back. It feels good, all right? Uh, Iron Will is great because you take 50% reduced toughness damage if you are above 75% toughness. This is very, very helpful. In a lot of situations this is how you can actually survive pox bursters with voice of command by going over the limit inspiring presence is really good because inspiring presence will basically give you 
and your team 10% extra toughness replenishment. It's not much, but it really does boost them up, especially when several other people are, are running Inspiring Presence. The Psyker is one of those nodes as well, yeah? But it's also needed to progress because you're going to have to get Born Leader. Born Leader will allow your allies in Coherency to replenish 15% of any toughness that you replenish. This is what makes this build an amazing support build. It will help you regenerate the toughness of everybody around you. Again, if there's no enemies within 8 meters, you become a fountain of toughness regeneration, which is absolutely awesome. Okay, Rending Strikes is the next thing, and this is so good. As you know, rending basically means armor penetration in this game. It is different from Brillness, which is actually applied on, say, Onslaught and Exploit Weakness, both of which are also called rending, but this, as we know from the patch notes, is an error. These are, these are the ones that apply Brillness. Whereas this one applies rending. Rending will basically act as armor penetration for the weapon that you're using. In this particular case, it'll mean that your weapons will deal 15% uh, more damage against that armor type. So it's not 15% more damage overall. What it means is that, for example, let's say you deal 80% damage to flak armor targets. Instead of dealing 80% damage, now you deal 95 because it's a flat additive bonus, as far as I remember. It's not multiplicative, right? If I'm wrong on that, somebody please correct me in the comments and I'll pin your comment. But I'm pretty sure it is an additive bonus, so it'll just make you do 15% more to that armor type. End of story. Okay? That's basically it. Um, after that, what will happen is that you want to take Toughness Boost and then go for the Emperor. For the Emperor may only be a 5 second boost, but I have found that it can genuinely flip certain fights because that ex during those extra five seconds you are extra deadly by 20 percent of extra of, of base damage you can shoot quite a few specials in that time yeah sure you've only got five bullets but that can be five kills i've done it before i've done it on stream so for the emperor is pretty useful for this if you don't want it you can always take something else there are indeed options out here which you might feel more comfortable with. Um, but again, I leave that up to you. You can get an extra critical chance boost if you want, but you don't really need it with this build. Okay, that literally brings us to the end of this. That was a detailed explanation. Why did I go more detail on this? Because I just wanted you guys to understand all of the choices in this. And at first, I myself didn't really understand this. I've built similar builds. I've worked with similar builds, but this is one that really has to be optimized down to the wire and all of your choices do matter there isn't a lot of variation like i said the only variation i made was demolition team into volley adept to compensate for the reload speed that's about it and that brings us literally to the end of this video i hope this was informative and i hope this got, this helps you build the uh, revolver veteran as much as i have enjoyed building it and special credit to moon t for coming up with this build thank you so much for sharing it with me if you guys have builds that you think work well in auric damnation slash maelstrom and you want me to build try it myself live on stream maybe do a video on it let me know i am very very hungry for zealot builds because i am a terrible zealot and i would love to know what you're using if it works and i would love to know how i can build that when i start the zealot next week if you guys have veteran builds or psyker builds let me know i'm willing to try it all right Thank you very much for this. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show, the video, the build. Yeah? Okay, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do uh, subscribe to my channel, make sure that you hit the bell button and set the notifications to all. Otherwise, you're only going to get select videos recommended to you from YouTube instead of, you know, seeing whatever I put out. This change has been there for a long time, but a lot of people don't know that they have to hit the bell and set it to all as well. Okay, so just make sure to do that. Thank you guys very much for watching this video, and now let me thank all the awesome people that make this possible. Oh, that's right. Sorry, before I do that, combat demonstration is in the link. All right, it's in the description of the video. There's a link there in the link. It's in the description of the video. There's a link there. There's also a card talking about the combat demonstration right up here. Uh, sorry that I forgot to mention it before doing my closing statements. Sometimes that happens, but that's okay. I know you guys forgive me. All right, thank you very much. Here are the top supporters for october these are the people that have kept the channel running if you want your shout out in here all you got to do is just get into one of these categories starting with our top tipper river archer 124 all right top tipper list goes to vaskin top super chatter jason kun top super chatter list oracle braid wow that was the most asian pronunciation hey everybody ever. what up it's your favorite asian robot sorry about that that was the most asian pronunciation ever oracle blade death dawning 982 dookie strix necron sage john taylor paxi 
and my top channel membership gifter is Nightshade. Thank you guys. Oh my god. I embarrass myself right now. Thank you to these people so much for supporting the channel, keeping us running. Now I'm going to thank all the channel members. I'm still burning with embarrassment right here, but I'm trying to power through it. Um, these are the people who are keeping our channel running and keeping us going, starting right at the top. We've got Big Chungus at the only fan level. We've got Death Donning 982 at Plus Ultra. We've got Yuri, Jason Kun, Jerry Fast, Rogue Assassin, and Zack and G Prestige. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all of our honored robots as well. Thank you to Atomica, Emix, uh, Jord Rackhorst, Cordova, Yabs, Nightshade, Bob John, Devin Lashin, Mookie Mocha, Rena, Chase Taylor, Nathan Strong, Lady Neo, Joey Danze, Sayed Asad, Coda CMF, Kami SMH, Conrad C, and Benjamin Savage. Thank you guys very much. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. I'm going to go roll away now and bury myself under a rock. So embarrassed. See you guys on the next one. Catch you later.